Ribolaris is an international multi-center phase two trial sponsored by Salty in collaboration with UniCancer and Novartis Pharma and supported by BIG. It is led by four principal investigators, Dr. Alish Pratt from Hospital Clinic in Barcelona, Dr. Paul Catou from Institut Curie in Paris, Dr. Joaquin Gavilla from Instituto Valenciano de Oncología and Dr. Thibault de la Motorouche from Centre Eugene Marquis in Rennes. It will be conducted in 48 hospitals from Spain and France. Among patients with breast cancer, up to 70% have hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative tumors. In early phase disease, the standard adjuvant treatment is based on endocrine therapy with or without chemotherapy, depending on the risk of recurrence of each patient. Up to 20% of the patients will develop distant recurrences, so identifying high-risk patients and offer them new strategies is a current medical need. Moreover, identification of patients for whom chemotherapy may be spared is critical to improve disease treatment management. How do we identify high-risk patients? Breast cancer intrinsic subtypes, luminal A, luminal B, HER2-enriched, and basal-like, have important clinical implications, being luminal A the subtype with the best prognosis. However, since prognosis varies widely, even within luminal subtypes, treatment choices cannot be done solely based on a subtype classification. Therefore, based on the PAM50 predictor, the so-called risk of recurrence score was developed. ROAR score is a standardized biomarker for identifying high-risk patients and is derived from an algorithm based on the PAM50 gene signature, intrinsic subtypes and clinical variables including tumor size and nodal status. The current medical need is the improvement of neo- and adjuvant treatments for patients with hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative high-risk breast tumors. CDK4-6 inhibitors already established in the metastatic setting are currently being tested both in the neo- and adjuvant setting for luminal disease. Some ongoing trials evaluate the role of adding these drugs to the adjuvant treatment in combination with endocrine therapy in high-risk luminal patients, although controversial results have been obtained and still one trial to publish them. Neopal and Coraline neoadjuvant trials have already demonstrated that patients treated with endocrine therapy plus CDK4-6 inhibitors derive similar results to those treated with chemotherapy. In particular, Coraline trial demonstrated that a similar percentage of tumors turned from aggressive luminal B to less aggressive phenotype ROR low at the surgery when ribocyclib, a CDK4-6 inhibitor, plus endocrine therapy arm was compared with a chemotherapy arm. This indicates that chemotherapy and its derived toxicities could be avoided in some high-risk patients. With this in mind, the question is, can these patients continue receiving a chemo-free treatment after surgery? Rebo Laris tries to find the answer. The objective is to evaluate safety and long-term efficacy of a non-chemo treatment in luminal breast cancer patients with initial high-risk clinical features who are biologically responders to neoadjuvant ribocyclib and letrozole. 530 patients will be enrolled, pre- and post-menopausal women and men with primary operable hormonal receptor positive HER2-negative early breast cancer. Patients must have grade 2 or 3 and stage 2 breast cancer with high proliferating tumors assessed by Key 67 greater than 20%. All patients will receive letrozole plus ribocyclib as neoadjuvant therapy. Treatment will consist of 24 weeks of daily letrozole and ribocyclib. In premenopausal and man patients, monthly LHRH agonists will be added to letrozole and ribocyclib. After finalization of neoadjuvant treatment, patients will undergo surgery. Adjuvant treatment will be decided according to centrally assessed presignal risk of recurrence and pathological state after surgery, and they will be assigned to cohort 1 or 2, depending on their responses. Cohort 1 – responders, cohort 2 – non-responders. Responder patients will continue on treatment after optimal recovery of surgery and radiotherapy if indicated. Treatment with ribocyclib in the adjuvant setting will be maintained for 30 months, approximately. 
Letrozole treatment duration must be of at least five years. Non-responder patients will continue treatment with ribocyclob and endocrine therapy after optimal recovery of adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy if indicated. Patients will be followed until 60 months last patient surgery. Primary endpoint is distant metastasis-free survival in the responder cohort.